Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Coffee with KPP Live, the show that's dedicated to providing you with advice for life so that you can live richly and work towards the life that you've earned. My name is Kyle Roy. I'm a financial advisor with KPP based here in the heart of Louisville's east side on the corner of Hurstbourne Lane and Shelbyville Road. We at KPP are a comprehensive financial planning firm dedicated to providing our clients with financial goals, perspective, vision, well-diversified portfolio, and, and the guidance needed to get not only to, but also through retirement. And today, I'm so excited to introduce you to Maggie Hall, uh, one of my best friends in the planet, one of my best friend's daughter, who I've got, got to know well over the last 10 years. I've been able to see Maggie grow up, and uh, I'm, I'm, I'm just so excited to share her knowledge with you because there is nobody that I've ever met that understands the college planning process and the college paying, the way to pay for and fund college, whether it's through grants, scholarships, student loans, uh, you name it, nobody knows this stuff better than Maggie. So Maggie, thank you for joining us thank today. Thank you for having me. That's quite the introduction. <laughs> and, it's, and it's absolutely true. And I think everybody's going to see very quickly how impressive you are. And so Maggie goes to EKU, and you're studying what? Occupational therapy. And you are a? I am a freshman by year, but a sophomore by credit hours. All right, and we're gonna talk about that. So she's a sophomore by, by credit hours. And I'll tell you, Meg, every time I talk to you, I'm blown away. I can't believe you're a freshman in college. <laughs> uh, I, I feel like I'm, I'm speaking to somebody with the maturity and the knowledge base of uh, somebody that, that's my age. So. Thank you. So, no, thank you. <laughs> and I'm old, so that's a really good compliment. <laughs> thank you. I guess. So, uh, so what, what I want to do is, what we're in this show, we, I want you to literally share everything you know. Maggie literally has about four pages of notes here. Uh, and I want to start from the, the, from the beginning. So, uh, one of the things you're going to find is that Maggie, from a very early age, was able to understand what her high school grades and what her high school performance would mean for the long term. Uh, and that really starts with a foundational understanding, I think, of the world. You understand money um, more than most people, never mind most people your age. So if you don't mind, tell us, let's go to the beginning. Where did you, where do you, what do you owe your understanding of finances to? Uh, yeah, so definitely my parents. So starting young, we had give, save, spend envelopes every Sunday. We would like get our allowance and put those there. So, and I was always definitely more of a saver. I put more of my money in the save and the spend. So that was definitely a big thing for me, just realizing that money's gonna probably be more valuable later to pay off bigger things. I mean, when I was six, it was probably saving up for something bigger, but just as I've gotten older, I've realized how important it is to save that money for college, save for the future, because I don't wanna have those loans at going into college. Um, so, so when you were six years old, you were already putting money away for college? Well, I don't know that drastic, but All right, definitely okay. more saving than... <laughs> but, but come to high school, you did. So so yeah. let's let's come into... Let's move forward. So shout out to to uh, BJ and Angie Hall yes. for uh, for helping Maggie understand that in her early age. So let's, let's talk through high school, okay? Um, now, we live in Kentucky, so a lot of the things we're going to talk about are specific to Kentucky. Yes. Um, but... There's a lot of carryover to other states because I'm sure states have similar programs to help kids yeah, fund college. Definitely. So in high school, what, what advice would you give to parents or grandparents with high school students? Or let's imagine they want to share this video with their high school students. What should those people be thinking? Um, so definitely the first thing is to prioritize your GPA. So that's your grade point average. It's your uh, collection of how well you perform your A's, B's, C's, and D's in high school. Um, and it's just over four years. So definitely the biggest thing is to prioritize that because that's the main thing colleges look at when you submit is what is your GPA. So with that comes, so it's usually on a 4.0 scale. A 4.0 is all A's, 3.5 is a B's and A's, and 3.0 is B average. So that's just kind of the scale. And then um, so with your GPA, you want to take classes that challenge you. So you're getting that practice of studying and reading and critical thinking and test taking strategies. You want to build a strong foundation with those while also taking classes that you know you'll be able to be successful in because if you're setting yourself up for failure, that's not gonna be good 
for you in the future. So let's talk about how GPA carries over to money and finances. So in Kentucky specifically, why does your GPA matter the most, uh, even above ACT scores or SAT scores? Why is GPA the most important? Yes. Yeah, so in Kentucky, we're really lucky to have this program called the Keys Program, which is the Kentucky Educational Excellence Scholarship. So it's funded by the Kentucky Lottery. So every student in Kentucky that decides to go to an in-state school, um, so any school in the state of Kentucky, each year, based on your GPA, you get a set amount of scholarships. So if you're a freshman year of high school, you get a 4.0, you're guaranteed $500 a year in college. And then- $500 per year, not per semester. No, it's per year. Per year, okay, yes. all right. And then, so if you're second semester, you get a 3.8, that might bring you down to $450. But then still, you have $950 a year guaranteed. So just really prioritizing to keep that GPA high to get that keys money, you can get a total of $2,500. So 2000 from getting a 4.0 every year, and then also based on your ACT score, you do get a bonus on your keys. So if you have above a 28, that's another 500, and then it just kind of decreases from there based on your score. But that's a really super incredible thing that we have in Kentucky that's very valuable. So your grades literally make you money. Yes. Literally. Yes. So now let's talk about, uh, you mentioned something that's really important, that taking the appropriate classes. Now, yes. uh, we all want our kids to obviously be challenged. And we understand that if our children can take AP courses, that could shorten their college career, so to speak, and save a lot of money. But, 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 let's talk about the how important it is to make sure high school students are in the appropriate classes for them because a D in an AP class mm -hmm. is worse than an A in a standard class. So if somebody is a really smart student but is misaligned in an AP course, that could not only cost them money, but it could uh, also hurt their grade point average to a place where they might not get into the right school, right? So yeah, let's talk about that definitely. for a So with AP, there's kind of two different elements. So you have your high school element, which is the class where you get a grade. And then at the end of AP classes, which is an advanced placement class, it's run by a company called the College Board, which is just, if you're applying to college, you'll have heard of the College Board, like they run most of it. They are very important. But So they give you a test at the end of the year, usually comprised of multiple choice and essay questions, and you fill them out. And then uh, about two months later, you get a score from a one to a five. So a one and two are failing, and then a three, four, five is passing, with a five being the best. Um, and most colleges, if we're talking about Kentucky, most all colleges will take a three, four, and five in your different areas. Some only take fours and fives. It just kind of depends. But so when you're going into it, you want to think, not only do I want to be able to pass this class to do have a good mark on my GPA, but I also want to set myself up for success where I'm using this class for what it's intended for to get college credit, to get that three, four, or five. Because, I mean, I've taken high school classes, AP classes, where I've reaped the benefits and I've been able to get college credit for it, but there's also been somewhere I've done okay in the class, but like it wasn't my expertise and I maybe shouldn't have taken that class. I just wanted the challenge and I didn't do as well on the test. Okay. I see. Yeah. All right. Um, sometimes failure is your best lesson in life yeah. though, isn't it? Yes. Uh, I mean, I, 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 I'm not a math person. I love, I see, <laughs> and you know your strengths, right? Yes. Um, but you're great in front of the camera, by oh, the way. So it's okay if you're not that great at math. That'll work itself out. All right. So, so I want to talk about how you knew all this in high school. So granted, your parents, I'm sure, had a lot to do with it as well. But, but talk about how throughout high school you recognized the importance of this at an early age. How, do you, how did that affect you and your performance while you were in high school? And and uh, you know what differentiated you? Why do you think most kids don't don't think the way that you were? Yeah, so I feel like most students think that it'll just figure themselves out. Like if I don't take this class here, I'll just take it in college. But if you can get some of those, like even as a seat going into my senior year of high school when I was starting to apply to colleges and I was touring, like I didn't know how much of an impact it would have. So that's where you want to look up your colleges and see what classes. But uh, once I realized how important having those credits could be and being able to carry those over for college. And for me, it was not having to take a math class in college because I realized that wasn't my strength, but because I had an AP that could cover that, like I didn't have to take that specific math class or a history class or something of that sort. So just really realizing that I wanted to use my college years to focus on stuff that I was interested in learning and would be valuable for my future career and just going ahead and getting those classes out of the way 
that's when I realized it was super valuable to take those classes. And and one of the things that you told me your parents did too is they helped you understand the cost benefit of college, right? Yeah. So let's talk about that. You know, how important do you think it is nowadays? When when I was going to college um, decades ago, most of my friends went undecided, right? And it really was. It was a different time. I really do believe that the level of competition. For college mm -hmm. placement seems to be so much higher than it ever was. Mm -hmm. uh, the the competition for scholarships is the same, and and I really think that it has required young people to a have a better perspective of what they want their futures to be, and really uh, start focusing on their passion a little bit early and try to hone that skills. So, so those skills. So let's talk about cost benefit of college and the application process because. There are some really important points that you've made to me that I think you should share. So, so please. Yeah. So one thing when I was starting the application process is I sat down with my parents or they sat me down and they were like, we're going to give you X amount a year for college. So, so they, parents set the expectation of what you can expect for college. Yeah. So they said each year that you go to college, we will give you this amount of money. You can go to a college where that covers the entire cost, or you can choose to go to a college where that's a fraction of the cost and you have to find something that fills in the rest of that gap through scholarships or eventually loans if you have to do to, if you do have to take those out um, yeah that's great so so you knew what to expect all yeah. right so now let's go talk now let's talk about the application process mm -hmm. and that the even the application fees you knew how much the fees were for each college so we'll talk about that if yeah, you don't mind so this was something that i probably could have done better on i kind of went in blind and didn't do as much research as i should have as so i knew that what program i wanted to go into which was occupational therapy and around kentucky there's not a ton of programs so i was like oh maybe i'll just go somewhere else and get an undergrad and i wasn't really focusing on what was the obvious best path best path for me so i ended up wasting a couple hundred dollars on application fees so being sure that you know what colleges you want to apply to that have programs that are valuable to you that you think you could truly have interest in before you apply so you're not wasting fifty dollars here on an application or sixty dollars here on an application like obviously leave your options open and apply to schools that you could see yourself at but just applying to schools to apply to schools is not always the most valuable option yeah and i, I think that's probably an old school thought you, you know you apply to ten schools and you'll get into five and you'll have your your one priority and then you'll have a couple safe schools but mm -hmm. application fees are fifty to seventy five dollars each so ten schools as a, at a sixty dollar average that's six hundred dollars yeah. right uh, and and I love how your parents set that expectation because when you're building a budget, you can get fifty and sixty dollar to death. Whether it's food plan, books, application fees, you name it. Um, th the fact that they gave you the ability to recognize that every decision that you make costs money and could take away from an opportunity to spend that somewhere else. Uh, I think it's just I love it. It just kind of gives me goosebumps a little bit. Okay, so now let's talk about um, loans. So we'll talk about the different kind of programs that are out there, whether it's FAFSA, scholarships, you name it. So what do you know about that? Yeah, so starting off with FAFSA, FAFSA is the free application for federal student aid. So that's every year on October 1st, the federal student aid office opens an application that's um, primarily um, economic based. So based on your economic status, you submit your income, your parents' income, different tax information, financial stuff. Um, and the Federal Student Aid Office will send you how much money they will give you in a loan a year. So the FAFSA gives out loans, grants, and work studies. So with the loans, that's money or that's money you have to pay back. With the grants, you don't have to pay back. That's just money that the Federal Student Aid Office gives you. And then there's work study where you have to work, but they will pay back your college. So the big thing is the loans. So they will give you a value. Typically, the better you are economically, the less financial assistance they will give you. So the more resources you have, the less FAFSA help you're going to get because FAFSA is an economic qualification program. Yeah. So higher net worth individuals generally won't get, their children won't get any money for exactly. FAFSA. Uh, those that are less financially fortunate will get more, right? Typically. All right, but talk to us about what you did there because I thought what you did there was brilliant because Maggie, how much, are, so let me ask you this, this year, how much are you paying in college? Zero dollars. How much are your parents paying in college? Zero dollars. I should have said that at first. <laughs> Maggie is paying zero dollars in college and her parents are paying zero dollars this year. Okay, so I want to talk about the programs that you have and all that, but did you still sign up or apply for FAFSA? Yes, so signing up for the FAFSA is super important and to do it early. So the FAFSA says that 
the earlier you fill it out, the more money you're likely to receive from them. But the so thing, the earlier you fill it out, the yes, more you're likely to get. The closer okay. to that October 1st release date. So the thing with the FAFSA is if you fill it out and you don't use it, no harm done. You spent 30 minutes filling out an application, but if you don't take those 30 minutes and fill it out and then something happens along the way, albeit I hope it doesn't, you don't have that to fall back on it and you kind of don't have that help. So it's just super important to go ahead and fill it out of the way as much of a hassle as it may be. Just sit down, fill it out because you never know what could happen and when you might need it. Did you fill it out yourself? I did. And you just did that on your own? You just knew that you had to do it? Uh, yeah. I mean, I contacted my parents to get their information, but yeah. Okay. But you did it, uh, you took the initiative and your parents just got a phone call from you one day and said, I'm filling out the FAST before I need these answers. Yes. I told you, every <laughs> every parent's dream college student right here, right? All right, but here's what's fascinating about that. So with, without even knowing it, this is why I think your instincts are so good. You recognized cheap insurance is what you effectively mm-hmm. saw. You knew that if I fill out this FAFSA form, it will give me a line of credit. It'll give you an access to capital that you may not need. Uh, and that's called a line of credit, right? So you hedged your bets. You knew that you had... You knew you had your first year paid for, mm-hmm. yet you still took the initiative to fill out that FAFSA form in case that you needed it because you're a humble person and you recognize that things happen. Yeah. And and I thought that that was brilliant. I never seen that. I never heard of that. And I think it's something that everybody should do. And Definitely. it's not gaming the system. What you're doing is leveraging the resources that are available to you in the event that you need them and you're not taking advantage. You're not taking money you don't need. Uh, what you're doing is leveraging the capital that you may need. So um, just just brilliant. I love it. Thank okay. You. All right. So now let's talk about scholarships. And yes. uh, so this we'll, is a big one. This is a big one. All right. So let's walk down the line and let's help everybody understand how Maggie Hall is not paying for college nor her her parents. <laughs> okay. This so year. there's three basic categories of scholarships. So you have your school scholarships, which are your college scholarships, you have your local or community scholarships, and then you have your national scholarships. So starting with school, that's your merit-based scholarship. So based on the GPA and ACT scores you submit, your school will give you a certain amount of money off. Hopefully. Your school, your college. Your college, Your college, yes. okay, all right. Um, so that's where my benefit came in, was because of that GPA and ACT score. But further than just the merit scholarship, which is academic performance, you also have um, scholarships within the school. So if your specific department, so for me specifically, health science is the college I'm in at my university. Um, they have their own departmental scholarships, so I need to look at those and apply to those. Or there may be, uh, so for me, my grandpa went to the same college I did. There's a legacy scholarship, so just making sure that I look around, research, Google's your best friend, look it up. Okay, I was going to say that. So if you so you go to Eastern Kentucky University, so somebody at EKU, WKU, wherever they are, would they just did you just Google EKU ancillary scholarships or life sciences scholarships? You just kind of went yeah. through and just click around on the website, click every tab, see what they got. And nobody coached you to do this. You just had, were curious enough to say, how much money can I? Yeah. All right. All right. So, so now through that, through that, how many scholarships did you find? Because, because that, it really is fascinating. There are so many foundation programs that people love to give to those that are like them, Definitely. right? Yeah. And, and see them, see themselves in young people like you. So, I mean, and so how many scholarships, when you did that, were you surprised by how many you found or were you just kind of underwhelmed? Yeah, so for Eastern, they have this really cool program called the Foundation Scholarship. So that's you submit one application and every donor that wants to give a scholarship, thousands and thousands of scholarships for Eastern, your one application goes to as many as you qualify for. And obviously you're not going to qualify for everyone because... Yeah, so it's like a filter system, you say I'm doing this, that, and it goes to the ones that are applicable. It takes out the guesswork for you of, do I apply for this one? It just automatically sends to the ones you apply for. And what's that called again? At Eastern, it's called the Foundation Scholarship. The Foundation Scholarship, so it's one application process that filters out to all of them. That's actually brilliant. So hats off to Eastern Kentucky. Yeah, I don't think a ton of the other schools do, based on what some of my friends have said and but I've looked up a couple things. So did you hear that, Eastern? That's a shout out to Eastern right there from Maggie. That's what that was. All right. Yeah. Okay. All right. So through that, how many were you able to find or how many found you? Um, so foundation scholarships, 
I wasn't able to receive any this year just as a freshman. Like, I didn't qualify for a ton. I wasn't in a specific program yet. Okay. Um, but I was able to find. So, with my honors college that I'm in, I get a scholarship for that. Um, I get one for being the legacy, like I talked about with my grandpa. And then also, Eastern has a study strong scholarship, which takes your scores that you get on the AP, again, pulling the importance of doing well on those exams. I also got money for those. So those were the school scholarships I got from Eastern. Fabulous. Okay. All right. So now let's, uh, now we'll talk about the local scholarships. Yep. So that's can, um, with your high school or the city you live in. Um, so specifically for Oldham County, which is where I was able to go to school. So Oldham County, Kentucky. Yes. No. So they have what's called an Oldham County Community Scholarship. So it's very similar to the foundation I was speaking of where you have one application and everyone that wants to give a scholarship you have that. So I was lucky enough to get one of those. Um, so that's just a super important thing if your community does have something like that. And even if they don't, like I found even more scholarships by looking on my school's website and seeing if they had any scholarship listing or just looking up my city scholarship or like my doctor's office even had a scholarship that I was able to apply for. So just looking up different places you go, things you're involved in and seeing if a scholarship happens to pop up because chances are not a ton of other people are looking for those or applying for those, so your chances are higher. That's right. So if, so you were really involved in the community. Your parents are extremely com involved in the community, and it really is. If you look at the local scholarships, whether whatever township, municipality you belong to, uh, if you belong to organizations, Girl Scouts, Boy Scouts, who knows, right? Those are there. There, there's just people that are really looking to build the future of our country, and I, I mean, just just do it. Be curious, and that's what you are. Uh, all right, so now let's go up. So we've got the school scholarships that you are really merit-based, the local scholarships that are really just are, are in organizations trying to build the youth of the community and promote that, and then you have national scholarships, right? So let's yeah. talk about those. So those are your big ticket scholarships that obviously there's a lot more competition. You have everyone in the United States that's applying for those scholarships, so you're much less likely to get them, but in the off chance that you do, like, the way – my parents kind of told me to think about it and different resources I read and listened to were talking about treating it as a part-time job. So if you spend an hour a day applying for scholarships and you happen to get a $500 random scholarship, who knows what, that's $500 an hour that you made. So it's like you just kind of, again, have to think of it as a cost-benefit analysis. Mm -hmm. I told you she's a freshman in college. So yeah, I mean, and 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 that's that's the thing about it. I, what I love more than anything about the way you, not only do you deserve the scholarships that you get and more, uh, you're a leader. Uh, you you've helped your friends navigate these waters. Uh, you've helped. Uh, I mean, me and my family. I'm sure a lot of people watching this are going to be calling me asking for your information <laughs> and I'm just going to have to I'm just going to have to be your 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 bodyguard there okay because I think when we leave the building we're going to have to escort you to your car there's oh going to be a, a, a mass of people down there oh but the reality of it is is what I love more than anything Maggie and and there really is a foundational understanding of, of the the value of money and the value of your time so when you when you say where else are you going to make $500 for an hour of work and it's really online sitting down and and just filling out an application mm -hmm. and it's it's recognizing how important this time is as a young person for the rest of your life because the difference between graduating college with suffocating debt and graduating with little or no debt is liberating it gives you the opportunity to spend your time doing those things that make you happy and make you thrive and when you're happy and when you're thriving, you'll be able to spread your talents and your joy and you'll be able to share that with others and be the light that you can. Now, I'm not saying you can't do that with student debt, but it becomes a lot easier to live richly when you don't when you're not encumbered by a massive debt. Uh, and especially if if you're in an occupation that you love, but the cost of that education is literally taking up 50, 60, 70 percent of your gross income. Definitely. So so one of the things that you also talk about and what you are is just a, a, a phenomenal advocate for yourself. Mm -hmm. You have invested this time in yourself. You've from the time you were six years old, you practice the art of delayed gratification more when in that savings envelope. Yeah. So talk about talk to the young people about that. How do you advocate for yourself during the application process? And what have you done to prepare for the, for those things? Yeah, so definitely I just would get on my computer, type in 
blank 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 college blank blank program and just sees what pops and just see what pops up and just click around and then on Eastern I love just going to the occupational therapy tab and just seeing what people have written about it what different projects they've done and then so that's researching looking up different programs different opportunities different colleges within a university so that might be an honors college that might be a specific program you're interested in or a specific club that makes that school more attractive to you um, so just researching using the tools provided to you because most people aren't doing that so just looking up stuff um, and then also once you kind of decide on a university being as involved as you can before you even get there so that's if they have online chats where they're explaining what the rec center looks like just and you're one of five people on that call or explaining one of the ones I remember I was one of four people it was a like an honors college call with the health sciences so seeing how those two um, intertwined and I now have great relationships with the lady in charge of the honors college and the health science just because I was there and was able to form those connections in a small group and then also just so you showed up yeah. You showed up. Yeah. Yeah. Going to as many on-campus events as possible. I went to school, the campus probably four or five times um, in between the time I toured originally and the time I went to college just for different events. And I had the privilege that it wasn't super far. So I was able to do that, which I'm really grateful for, but definitely. Just... How much of all these things that helped your, so, and so money aside, right? Do you feel like your ability to know college is paid for and the fact that you're participating in all this? Has it enhanced your college experience as yeah. opposed to people that are might be in their dorms playing video games all day? Definitely. Knowing that I have that kind of cushion of having those scholarships, I feel more comfortable taking my money and doing things that are more fun instead of worrying about, oh, I need to save this $8 that I'm going to go spend on dinner and put it away towards college. Like, I feel better going to spend that money to go out and have fun with friends and hang out or joining a club that costs some money just to form connections and network and just looking at every opportunity as this is helping me grow and making sure that I invest in opportunities that are really helping me there. Wow. Well, um, well, is there anything, anything else that uh, you'd like to, to close us out with or any other thoughts that I might not be asking about? Um, that kind of hits most of the ground surfaces and even more, but Definitely just even throughout your college career, stay invested because there are scholarships from freshman year of high school. You can start getting scholarships to through grad school. You can get scholarships everywhere. So just always keeping an eye out, being curious about your university and different programs you can get involved in because you can, you never know what you're going to find. So don't stop. So yeah. and, and one of the things that we talked about is you know your freshman year is paid for, mm -hmm. but you don't know if your sophomore year is paid for yet, right? Mm -hmm. So so you're going to have to reapply or in research new scholarship programs because there are many one-time grants, one-time scholarships and and they don't stop. There are websites out there, there are just incredible resources that you've been able to leverage. Yep. Wow. So, I, I mean, Maggie, thank you. Thank, thank you, you so much. I appreciate you. Um, and uh, yeah, th this young lady has just impressed me uh, b beyond belief, and I hope that she's done the same for you. Uh, if, I were, if I were to say, I, I mean, thank you isn't enough because it really has. I mean, I have four children, and, um, and you know, it, we really just try to – relay the importance and understanding of money in a responsible way right i mean mm -hmm. how do you help a how do you have a 14 15 year old person really understand the value of a dollar mm -hmm. and hats off to your parents for doing that uh and more so just your curiosity and your you realize that the one person that's going to help you more than anybody else is yourself mm -hmm. you've taken that accountability and that responsibility and you've taken the initiative and to your point, it's a half hour here, an hour there, filling out something online, just being curious, looking for things that interest you and pursuing those opportunities uh, because the, the road has been laid before you. And you're just, you are just um, going to have a phenomenal future. And I can't wait to see, and I just can't wait to hear the feedback from this show. And people are going to be saying, how do I get a hold of her? But the bottom line is this, uh, at, at Kentucky Planning Partners, we are here for you to provide these kinds of this kind of information, these kinds of ideas, because comprehensive financial planning is not all about saving for and getting you through retirement, but it's also family planning and making sure that no matter where you are in your financial life, 
that you have the resources and the information to be able to accomplish those financial goals and the cost of education not only is it the education but it's the books it's the living it's being able to go out to dinner maggie's spending eight dollars on dinner i don't know where that is by the way <laughs> Uh, especially up by EKU's campus. I mean, I don't know that doesn't happen anymore. But the reality of the situation is, is that it all adds up. And it just hats off to you, Maggie, for doing an extraordinary job. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, you so much. Thank you. So, and uh, so with that said, on behalf of everybody here at KPP, if you would like help with these issues or anything uh, regarding your financial life, you have a resource and a team with us. Our phone number is 502-394-0400. We are located in the heart of Louisville's east side, on the corner of Hurstbourne Lane and Shelbyville Road, on the top floor of the Flash Cube building. It is the best view in Louisville. I haven't had an opportunity to show you yet. I have yet. not seen it yet. Yeah, you should be excited. I was impressed walking up to the building, though. Awesome. And, and what's, what do you hit when you get in the elevator? The P. The P for the penthouse. <laughs> so that's where we are. So, so hopefully uh, everybody has a great holiday. We'll see you next week, and uh, thank you for watching. Bye-bye.